You know, in high school, I didn't get to read The Great Gatsby. Uh, we had to read something else. We had to read Eclipse from the Twilight Saga. Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Brandon Wheeler. I have a straw mouth because when I was in the army, a heat stroke, something happened to me. I can't talk right unless I bite down something. Five like that, five of that, that. Moving on. Welcome to my channel where I do some games, uh, make maybe some video posts and things about life and everything, Bible and stuff, and book reviews because I'm an inspiring author who's written two books. And in book review form, I've been trying to read a lot. So, and I wanted to read something that was classical literature, because I just got done with the Lord of the Rings uh, saga and everything, trilogy, and I wanted to be like, okay, I feel like I want to read something, like a classical book I've not read. So I thought of everything, I was like, you know, I've not read The Great Gatsby, so I got it, The Great Gatsby. This is the original 1925 version of The Great Gatsby. So if you've read something that has a little bit more updated stuff, then... That's why. <laughs> so this is more of an original thing. Uh, as far as art cover stuff, it is... I've seen this kind of artwork everywhere. Like, I have a teacher in college from a writing class. This is the front of her bag that she has on it. So it's like, huh, okay. So this is F. Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, the beginning of the book, actually, the first, like, ten pages actually good into when he wrote this book and everything and uh, the history behind it and everything and kind of how the book took off. Like he thought it was like a failure when it initially didn't do well. But afterwards when he died and because of World War II and everything, the book took off. And it's been in high schools ever since. Unless you're like, I don't even want to know what they do today. Oh gosh. But uh, I was in high school 14 years ago. <laughs> I just started college and everything. But out of that, if you don't know what this book is, you've probably seen the Leo Leonardo Caprio meme. One of several. I mean, seemingly whatever movies and he's meme worthy, whether it be Wolf of Wall Street or the Once Upon a Time or The Departed. Leonardo DiCaprio is just a meme, I guess. But then, you know, the one where he's toasting and everything, that's from The Great Gatsby. Now, I've not seen that movie, but I do remember it was advertised a lot back in the day. Because I kept seeing stuff all over the place, and the main thing was, you can't live in the past. And he's like, well, of course you can. And I was like, okay. And, of course, that meme of, you know, toasting to you and everything. I mean, it's I've watched some clips from it. Um, it's an interesting, you know, that scene particularly is probably the best shot of, like, the whole movie, and that's the intention. But adding modern music to the age of jazz is just like, you could have just done jazz. I know you were trying to do a modern thing to back then. Just, just use the jazz music of the day. Don't. Don't have to... Ugh. People would get the idea with the jazz music. I mean, come on. But anyway, maybe one day I'll watch the movie, or the several different movies, and I think there's a musical now, which... Anyway, I'm off topic, but I've done some research and everything. Um, read this. It's surprisingly short, because I wasn't... I didn't know what to expect. At least my book version is only... Was it 109 pages? Yeah, 109 pages, and the first 10 of that is backstory, so it's like 99 pages. Basically 100 pages. Very short, so an easy read. So, else I'm like, why, why why, didn't we read this in school then? Probably because there's some attitudes. Okay, spoilers. You probably know what The Great Gatsby is. If you don't, that's okay. The story deals with a guy named Nick Carraway, who's from the Midwest. He comes from, you know, some money-type stuff, old money, but he moves to New York, trying to, after the war, World War One, mind you, because it's 1920s. Just to distinguish, when someone says World War, it's either one or two. 1920s mean it's after World War One, which took place from 1914 to 1918, or for America, 1917 to 1918, because America entered in 1917. So, if, if you want something to watch World War One wise go watch The Lost Battalion or 1917 uh, movie, because those movies are good. All right, but, so you have the guy, he gets out there, he's going to kind of see his cousin, who he kind of knows and everything, meets her husband and stuff. The husband is a cad and everything, and he kind of makes racist statements and stuff that definitely probably wouldn't be clean or as welcome today, but thinking of the time period, the 1920s, is like, okay, that's where it is, but they're all rich. 
he stays in kind of a small house or whatever, but the house right next to him in this place on Long Island, fictionalized as West Egg, East Egg, West Egg, East Egg, um, is a big giant mansion where parties happen all the time, and he gets an actual invitation to go, and it's run by a rich guy named Jay Gatsby. You know, the Leonardo DiCaprio meme, that thing, which honestly, I would say, from a viewpoint, that is perfect casting, but it's just, I know the movie wasn't, yeah. anyway. Back to the book. But I do imagine Leonardo DiCaprio's Gatsby. But is Gatsby all that he seems to be, or is he something else? Is it all these different rumors, like he was this and that, he killed somebody, was he this and that, or well, who is Jay Gatsby really? What does he want? What is him being rich is all about? And is Nick trustworthy? So, I mean, there's a lot of subtext and stuff, like, if there's... I read some things about it online, some videos, and people were implying that Nick might be, uh, might have been kind of homosexual, or at least bi or something, and I'm just like, I don't get that from the book, I don't see where they're pulling from, it completely went over my head if that was the case, I know, see, these, this is the type of book that makes you think analytically and stuff like that, so that's why they teach in high school and things, and I kept trying to when, when I read those comments, I'm like, huh? And I kept looking through it. I'm like, I don't see that or anything. I mean, 1920s, the Roaring Twenties was a decadent time. It was, I mean, to say at least, because I'm going to compare it to that movie. I know the jazz thing and stuff, the party was maybe outlandish for maybe that time, but in this stage. But to be fair, it's just like 1920s. In some ways, it doesn't feel far off when you look at the 1920s. All stuff was kind of. Crazy before the crash in 29. But, um, especially in New York and the party cities. But, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't, that didn't really appear anything to me and then it went over my head and didn't affect my reading of it and stuff. But is Nick trustworthy? Because he, Nick described himself as he's the most honest guy he knows, speaking about himself. And it's just like, reading that comment, if someone has to say necessarily you're the honest guy you knows, you might be, or maybe not. I mean, you're trying to say, like, you're Moses, you're the meekest man on the face of the earth. You're not Moses, dude. Because <laughs> he makes some questionable decisions and stuff. And so, like, hmm. hmm. But Gatsby. Who is Gatsby? Where does he come from? Surprisingly, because I didn't know reading this book, it's very s tragic. That would be the word. Because I don't want... You can look up online. You, you probably know spoilers and everything like that. If not, I do... Well... I'll get into that. But it's surprisingly a tragic book. It's like ever chasing something. And like I mentioned about the movie Selling Point that I remember back in the day was, of course you can live in the past. Gatsby is in love with Nick Cowaway's cousin, Daisy. He loves her. He met her years, some years prior. But because of the war and everything, he couldn't marry her or anything like that. But she married somebody else. The thing about Jay Gatsby is that he was poor, and Daisy is rich. Pretty much all the people in this book are rich, including Gatsby, but Gatsby had to earn it. He didn't just, you know, kind of have old money and stuff like that. He had to work his way through it, but is the ways he worked, was it legitimate? That's another question. But he was trying to do everything he could to try to win her love from a love that he had years ago. And it's true, she did love him back in the day, but despite everything, honestly, yes, yeah, she loved him back then, but she doesn't necessarily love him now because she loves her husband. She does. She may not, it may be hard for her to admit and everything, but she does love her husband. And Tom, despite everything, it does seem that he does love his wife. Maybe not fully, but in an honest moment, there was a tender moment, I would say, where they're just holding hands, barely even talking. But it seemed in that moment that, uh, to me, it read between Tom and Daisy that, that he does actually love her. And she does actually love him. It's just Tom is uh, not the best of people. And what he does and everything in the book and who he is. But in general, he does have an affection for his wife. And she does for him after being five years at least together. Gatsby was trying to hang on to that past of knowing, hey, this is what he loved, but he's trying to live in that past in that moment, whereas in the current and the now, 
that's not available to him. He wanted to have that. He wanted to recapture that moment, but there's no way to, to take that in the past and bring it to the future. You can't. You have to be able to move on. If he, he could have moved on and got pretty much any girl he wanted, but he just was stuck in the past or so. But it's kind of a tragic tale about letting go or whatever. But, yeah, Gatsby, not really. He, I, I'd say I, I feel sorry for Gatsby. I do. If at least Nick Carraway's version is correct. Because it is written from the view of Nick Carraway. And could he have embellished some things? Maybe. Absolutely. <laughs> Probably. Definitely. But, like, making things about people saying stuff, like, again, it's from his view. We don't even know how Tom actually was. He could be saying stuff against Tom to make Tom really more of a villain than what Gatsby, and what because of what happened to Gatsby and everything. But probably the truest moment is when he says that the only compliment he actually paid Gatsby or something. That might be at least, at least his most honest moment in the book, I feel. His relationship with Jordan Baker, the golfer and everything, which, I don't know, I've read... I've said, I heard different things. People say that either this is Jordan Baker's face or this is Daisy. I don't know. I don't know well, who's it supposed to be. But he, he kind of gets in love with Jordan Baker, loves her donor. But again, Nick Carraway seemed like he already had a relationship back at home and was just like around a girl who's. So really, the book is a lot about not elitism, the rich, the rich people of New York and how. Just off-putting, a lot of them are. How riches can... Riches doesn't really buy happiness, you can say, but... The most telling thing is at the end, Gatsby... If you don't know, Gatsby dies. I won't get into every spoiler, but... No one, despite all the extravagant parties he had... Everything he had going on and stuff... No one would really show up. They're just there for the parties. They're just there for taking pictures. Like, oh, Gatsby died. And then that's it. They wouldn't care about the parties. They don't care. They never cared about the man. No one cared. Nick Carraway cared. Because he actually got to kind of see through the facade somewhat of a Gatsby and everything. And he at least got to appreciate the man. No one else did except his father shows up. Who is kind of estranged with somewhat. But his father came all the way out there for the funeral. And the guy that was just in his library who always kept reading his books and reading all the stuff around and everything like that, he came to the funeral. Which is like, the one guy who's like, this guy's strange and everything. No, he actually went and paid his respects. Whereas, uh, everyone who went, because it's a, like, all, according to Nick Carraway's version, th hundreds of people went from all Long Island and New York to go to Gatsby's extravagant, huge parties. And once he dies, it's just like, like oh, okay, that's that. Hey, what about that next party? I mean, it's sad. I can think of certain celebrities who, when they hit, they're the highest, biggest people we, and they're at their stardom. And then, because of different things, they drop off. And then all their friends leave. No one wants to help them. And if they get in some legal trouble or something, supposed to be like, well, they're maybe going through some things. We need to like pray for them or something. We need help. Supposed to showing themselves a friend, they kind of just abandon them, leave them off. And that's what's sad in some ways. Sad in a lot of ways. But, um, so yeah, a tragic tale of the Roaring Twenties of the Jazz Age and the hedonism and stuff and the just wars parties, not really appreciating people living in the now, just living in the past and people just seeing, oh, what's the next best thing? Supposed to appreciating everything. So it gets me earned everything but he couldn't earn the one thing he wanted and i think he kind of accepted that at the end he the way it reads right before his death i think he knew something was coming and he's just like okay so but other than that if i would recommend it if i had to read this or the book i had to read in high school <laughs> again i'd choose this <laughs> I, I actually thoroughly enjoyed the book i actually read it completed it a few days ago and I just keep thinking about it. I was like no, I, I enjoyed reading it more than what it is like I'm probably going to have to reread it through one of these days to see like okay I read I've watched some analysis videos I'm like why did maybe I didn't catch that maybe I need to reread it 
but that's good. It's, it's a book that wants to get you to think and go through things, reread. And I like that. So that's good. I kept thinking because of the that Nick Carraway is kind of like during the beginning where Tom's with these people and his mistress and all these different things. He's just kind of like there. Honestly, I was thinking of another book I had to read in high school about existentialism, The Stranger. Any of y'all read that book or had to read that book? I, for some reason, I kept thinking of, it had some vibes of that because just like didn't really think about anything, wasn't really caring about anything. I was just like, huh. I, I just kind of had vibes of that book while reading it. And I was like, hmm. But a little bit more hopeful <laughs> than the stranger who's just like, everything's pointless. It's like, even Ecclesiastes is more hopeful than you, bro. My goodness. But, so I got to read a classical book of American literature. Have you read the book? What do you think about it? What do you think about the stories or things I'm missing that you should, that I should completely know that we can talk about? Um, what's another book, classical, that I can read? My next on the order of reading is going to be a indie book that's coming in the next few days that I'm going to read. And then hopefully I get some more C.S. Lewis stuff. I'm looking at a science fiction trilogy to read. But as far as a classical more book, what is something I should read? Um, oh. Or just in general, what is the book I should read? Give suggestions or whatever down below, and I will look at them and be like, okay, we'll see. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.